I've mentioned the FDE cycle a lot on this channel, but I have never properly explained how it actually works. But in order to properly understand that, you need an understanding of the inner workings of a CPU. Here is a semi-comprehensive guide to the anatomy of a CPU. The ALU, or Arithmetic and Logic Unit, is the part of the CPU that deals with logic operations, such as ZOR and a NOT, and calculations on data, like ADD and SUB. The data that goes into the ALU is taken from memory, which is directed by the control unit, which we'll get to later. This data is interpreted as opcode and operand. An opcode is a binary value that determines the operation that is to be performed on the data, while the operand is basically the data being used. Keep in mind that the data being input into the ALU is always an integer or a number with zero decimal places. The same applies to data being output. This differs from a floating point unit, or FPU, which can do calculations on floating point numbers or numbers that are not integers. In multiplication and division operations, the ALU can shift bits left and right respectively. Shifting bits left will multiply the value by 2, shifting right will divide by 2. Alternatively, multiplication and division can be carried out by repeatedly adding or subtracting, which is fairly simple to do with binary numbers. Here are some examples of opcode values that may be used. This includes both arithmetic operations and logic gates. Once an instruction is calculated in the ALU, it is output to a register called the accumulator, which holds the result of the most recent calculation. This speeds up processing as it prevents the result from having to be written to and subsequently reread from memory. Manufacturers need to find a balance between making the ALU complicated enough to benefit overall CPU performance and making it too complex. The rule of thumb is that a more complicated ALU is larger and will subsequently hog die space, be more expensive to produce, and produce way more heat, and none of those three factors are desirable. However, the ALU won't get any data to do calculations with if the control unit didn't exist. The control unit has the job of coordinating processes that happen inside the CPU, and it tells the components in the CPU how to respond to the instructions that they are given. On top of this, it directs data flow to different CPU components. An aforementioned example of this would be the data being sent from memory to the ALU. The control unit plays a vital part in the FDE cycle, and one of the things in the CU that makes this possible is the program counter, which is a register that holds the memory location address of the next instruction to be fetched which is typically incremented by one at each iteration on the cycle, unless it is explicitly told otherwise. The control unit is linked to various other components in the PC, such as RAM, by a specialized bus called the control bus. This transports instructions and status signals to and from devices. This is the control unit's method of communication. So we need to look at registers next. A register is a small volatile memory store that holds important data that the CPU is currently using. The most notable ones being the MAR, MDR, CIR, program counter and accumulator. The memory address register stores the address of the memory location that the control unit requests to be accessed. This is linked to RAM by a one-way bus as there's no need for RAM to send data to this particular register. Meanwhile, the memory data register, also known as the memory buffer register, is where data from the memory location in the MAR is stored. This is linked to memory through a dual directional bus. The alternative name MBR is as a result of its purpose of holding instructions before sending them to the CIR. And finally, the current instruction register, as stated by the name, stores the instruction that is currently being processed. This one usually isn't linked directly to RAM. I've talked a lot about cache in the past, so I will keep this short. In modern CPUs, the cache is usually integrated onto the die, and on diagrams it lies between the external RAM and registers. These act as volatile memory stores that, while much bigger than registers, are also much smaller than RAM. It is also much faster than RAM, but slightly slower than registers. Cache stores instructions that are commonly used by the CPU to cut down on fetch time, and it comes in three forms. L1, L2, and L3. L3 is the largest, but it is also the slowest. The last thing to talk about is the two different architecture types, Von Neumann and Harvard. The differences between the two are relatively simple. Von Neumann uses the same buses and memory locations for data and instructions, 
while Harvard splits RAM between data and instructions, linking it to the CPU through separate buses for each purpose instead of just one. Most modern CPUs use von Neumann architecture now, although there is a potential bottleneck with this CPU type. This is because of the memory being physically separate from the CPU, resulting in the need for buses. This causes an unavoidable latency which could potentially be reduced slightly, but can't be avoided altogether without severe architectural changes. All in all, that is everything I wanted to cover for today. I hope you did find today's video helpful or enjoyable, and if you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe subscribe for more, possibly even share if you liked it that much. Uh, next week we'll be covering the FDE cycle and finally getting to the bottom of what I mean when I say that in my videos.